Hey everyone, hope you guys are enjoying Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak in whichever platform you're choosing to play it on. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about Monster Hunter Now and give a little bit of feedback regarding what players have been able to see and uh, some of the uh, discussions that have been happening behind the scenes regarding just how enjoyable the game has been during the closed beta as of now. Now I'm gonna be very clear for Capcom if they are watching, we're not gonna be breaking any embargoes here or anything along those lines. We're gonna try to keep it relatively light without spoiling anything that of course they don't want to get out there. At the same time though, there's been plenty of players who have now received access to the closed beta. If for whatever reason you haven't necessarily signed up for the beta, I'm gonna be leaving a link in the description below for you guys to do so already. And recently, they put up yet another tweet. I believe this might've been around the middle of the month in May, where they were basically confirming that thanks to all hunters who registered to the closed beta test, we have just sent out additional invitations to those who have been selected so far, so stay tuned for the latest updates. So essentially they sent out an even bigger batch of invites from before. I know for a fact that a couple of people that I have been in touch with who did not get in, now just recently got in. I got in in the second wave in the beginning of the month, so I've been checking out the game for myself and I've been talking behind the scenes with other players who have also been getting, able to get their hands uh, in the closed beta. So in this video, I want to give a little bit of the feedback since a lot of players are not necessarily sure what the heck is going on because Capcom has kept this game under wraps and Niantic has been no different as well. Not much has gotten out there. Not a lot of people know what the heck is going on. So I wanted to give a little bit of a voice as to why players are behind the scenes very excited for what Monster Hunter Now is currently doing at this moment. First and foremost, I want to quickly talk a little bit regarding just the basic controls. You're tapping constantly, you're holding, maybe you're swiping, very basic things. Every single attack, you're going to be tapping the screen. In typical fashion, mobile devices don't have actual buttons, so you're just constantly tapping the screen. There is a little bit of overlay cursor for your, you know, thumbstick movement type thing, but, you know, there's really nothing there. Uh, that gives you real feedback for like a button it's something that replaces a button in a typical controller fashion now when it comes to the monsters themselves we know capcom has uh, officially revealed four so far i believe uh rathalos puke puke great jagras and um also kulu yaku as well however there's of course a couple of other monsters that have been teased even through the like the showcase that they did the little presentation there was an anjanath armor showcase it is part of the game um there is a legiana tease in this official screens that they showcase but i don't believe uh, people have been able to see uh, leggy so far in the game there's other notable ones like toby um rathian great gyros barath you know typical uh, additional monsters that we should be expecting there to appear uh, will be making their way once people begin to see actual full-on uh, footage for the game. Now monetization aspects are some of the things that also players have been kind of wondering a lot on what exactly is happening with the monetization. There is no pay to win mechanics according to Niantic and uh, Capcom themselves have stated as much but of course there will be in-game currencies that you are tallying up multiple in-game currencies that you're tallying up um which of course let you buy things like potions uh, meats that you can you know turn to stamina um uh, wandering orbs which essentially increase your range and things of that nature gathering tools which of course for you to be able to gain plenty of resources if you have seen some of the screenshots that they have already posted some of the official screenshots this is that's nothing uh, too much behind uh, the eight ball here but if you have seen some of the screenshots you know there are gathering points like mining picking up herbs and things of that nature so gathering tools for those uh, different gathering nodes uh, is pretty much going to carry you um, to you for you to be able to go ahead and pick up uh, more materials a little bit faster and be able to do it more efficiently you get more rewards per node one of the interesting mechanics you'll also notice uh, that is pretty much how it is that you're engaging with monsters now you can choose to engage with monsters as you come across them but if you for whatever reason choose not to engage with them you can certainly use paintballs which at the end of the day will give you some sort of time limited maybe one to two days where you can essentially go back and and fight a monster that wasn't necessarily something that you wanted to deal with at that point in time you can actually go back and choose because essentially according to the game's logic you threw a paintball at it you know how to follow it 
should be able to get to that engagement whenever it is as possible. You're using essentially a material to be able to uh, go back to that battle at any given time and be able to engage with it whenever it is that you want. So you're not necessarily obligated to use or engage with every monster that you come across. You can pay ball them. You can ignore some of the ones that you want. And at the end of the day, uh, choose to go about your way. And that is how the game basically gives you the freedom to choose which engagement you want to go with. Maybe you fought uh, too many Kulu Yakus back to back. So essentially you come across Arathian maybe, and then you can pinball it or you can choose to just you know continually engaging with the other monsters you've kind of been grinding for uh, there is a little bit of a grind in this game but that's kind of expected you also expect that due to the closed beta information that they have collected so far uh, they might go ahead and give uh, players a little bit of xp boosters and things of that nature mobile games tend to do that relatively often so we should expect to see some adjustments down the road in that you know, before the official launch in September. But I do know there will be an open beta in the later months, maybe by July. Um, they will do open beta. So expect that to be probably the biggest uh, point where players get to see more information on this game. Now, the way weapons works is a little bit interesting as well, since it's probably not going to be very enjoyable for everyone, especially if their favorite weapon is not available at pretty much right away. And that is because you're unlocking weapons through levels, essentially HRs. So you start out with things like uh, sword and shield or dual blades, for example, but then you can unlock things like the great sword, the light bow gun, the hammer, things of that nature, the more HR you get. So essentially you have to play the game with a weapon you don't want to be able to eventually get to the weapon that you do want. And remember, each one of those weapons will eventually need to get upgraded and all of that. So you're spending resources on weapons that you might not even necessarily want to keep or a weapon type that you might not necessarily be even be interested in doing, but eventually you're unlocking the weapon access that you want, which is something that I think eventually they're going to have to work their way around on and eventually get players to just have the freedom to be able to choose whatever weapon you want right out of the gate and more weapons can unlock later. Maybe the ones that you don't necessarily feel like, for example, if you choose light bow gun, heavy bow gun and bow should be able to unlock relatively quickly, but then things like maybe great sword or sword and shield are unlocked at a later tier type of thing. Maybe they should rework and give you the option to be able to choose which weapon to start out with instead of just having a default weapon where everyone's learning the ropes with that same weapon. Uh, when it comes to resources, um, kind of like Pokestops, really, if, if you haven't necessarily played like Pokemon Go, think of it that way. Uh, random resource points where you're, plenty of things are going to pop up and you're going to be able to pick up a lot of materials from those nodes. I spoke a little bit about that before with the gathering tools, but that is pretty much the same thing with um, like Pokestops in, in that game. I didn't necessarily play Pokemon Go and it wasn't something that I was too interested in doing in this game. You know, it's, for me, it feels like a little bit of a drag, but it's just that same thing. No, really no that different from uh, that game in general. And something for me personally that I don't care for other people that I've spoken to about the game, they seem to be okay with it. But for me personally, it's just not too exciting. The last thing that I do want to touch upon is armor skills. They do work a little bit differently than you would expect. For example, like each armor has uh, maybe one main skill that you'll be like going after. Uh, they have subsequent ones, but at the end of the day, you're chasing after one specific skill. Um, uh, you're not really um, going to be like, <laughs> it's not going to be like Sunbreak, for example, where you're just, you know, putting on all the best skills available, talismans and decos and stuff like that. It's just not really going to be the way that this works. I'm sure Endgame will change some of that, but we're far, far from seeing what Endgame in this game is going to look like. So, Expect a lot of people at the very least early on go after one specific monster because they're going to go for that specific play style because that armor has a specific skill that they are after. So uh, eventually I'm, I'm, I'm imagining you're going to be able to craft skills into armors and different decos and stuff like that. And they'll be able to adjust all of that uh, down the road. But for now, um, you know, every armor specifically has one skill that you're after and sub 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 skills or secondary skills are kind of like supplementary, but they're not really the main thing 
that you're going to be paying attention to. I think that's the key points that I wanted to touch upon. I saw a lot of people requesting me to talk about the game, especially since I noted that I had access to it. But at the end of the day, a lot of people have been relatively positive on the experience of the game so far. And, you know, it's been one of those things where like, you know, if you're playing it and you're having a good time, cool. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, it is a, a completely different experience than what you're typically used to. It's a slower experience. It doesn't necessarily f feel all that fun for me personally, but uh, I'm not a big mobile gamer. And I know a lot of people are going to ask me, how come I'm not overlaying images or gameplay? For obvious reasons. I don't want Capcom or Niantic to be too upset that I'm talking about the game at the end of the day. Most of this video was just to tell people that go ahead and sign up for the closed beta. Definitely get registered and get full access to the game if you are so chosen. But that's all the information that I have for you guys today. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.